I have a new album coming out on Halloween, and this one's going to be sort of a slower album, uh, more atmospheric. I've been listening to a little bit of Dungeon since, and I think that that influence creeped in a little bit, but um, very medieval, very old school, and I hope everyone enjoys it. You've got that stupid logo on the bottom. You shouldn't be living like this. No one should live like this. This is whokeys.com where you can get a really good deal on a bunch of software, but namely Windows and Office. Windows Home or Pro. You can also get a combination of Windows 10 Pro plus Office 2019, or you can just get Office 2019 all by itself. So I'm gonna grab Windows 10 Pro and then we're gonna activate it by clicking on buy now. The coupon code is TS25. See that 1875, TS25, apply. There we go, 1406. Once you've made your purchase, it'll redirect you to this page. If you lose this page, you can just go up here on the top, click on this, and then click on User Center. If it's taken a minute, you can just press the F5 button to refresh the page, and hey, there it is, View Keys and Codes. Then click on Get the Key. You're in the middle of the page, that is your key. Copy that, press Start, type Activate, and click on Activation Settings. From here, click on Change Product Key, paste it in there, click on Next, and you will be activated. Again, thanks to whokeys.com for sponsoring this video, and that coupon code is TS25. Grab some stuff while you're over there, Windows, Office. All right, here it is. This is the, uh, you know, the titles are tentative, but in order to celebrate this, I wanna make a few more videos about uh, how I create my music and how you can also create music in similar ways. So let's see here, this one. This is mostly SNES style sounds. I don't know if you can hear the SNES influence, but Super Nintendo did not do chiptunes anymore. This is something different than chiptunes. These are instruments. We moved beyond FM synth and chiptunes and everything that you heard on the Genesis and the Nintendo. Let me fast forward a little bit so you can hear some of the song and then we'll get to the meat of the video. So as you can hear, that is, that's not chiptunes anymore. We're, we're, we're no longer doing chiptunes. So what did the Super Nintendo do differently compared to the, the Nintendo and the Genesis? Because that's all we're gonna focus on in this video, just how to do Super Nintendo style stuff. Well, Nintendo and even older DOS games and stuff like that mostly were chiptunes and then Genesis and also some older DOS games and other systems were FM synthesis. And Nintendo was like, you know what? Why don't we, uh, actually get some instrument samples. Now they had to be extremely compressed. You could not do just like raw wave samples or anything like that. So these were extremely compressed and that gives them this sound that is extremely unique. Hasn't been the same after and there wasn't really much before it. So the Super Nintendo has a very unique sound. It wasn't the first system to do this, but it was the biggest system uh, to do this. And it, this is ActRaiser, it's a beautiful soundtrack. Uh, and then I think my favorite soundtrack on the entire system is from a game called Draken. One of the, I think this was like right around the launch time, uh, a weird game, kind of an acquired taste. Gary Gygax contracted on this old RPG made in, I believe, by a French team. Now this soundtrack is mostly like strange organs and electric keyboards, and it just has this sort of calm, chill sound. I don't know, but it's so, this is so different. Now let's talk about how they did it and how you can do it at home. Now, if you really wanted to like be completely authentic, you, you could go get some instrument samples and then compress the hell out of them in the same way and use those instrument samples. But that's not how most people do it. It's not the easiest way. And it probably is not gonna produce the, the best sounding result unless you're like a, a super professional. What a lot of people do is they rip the actual sound uh, fonts, is what they call them, the sound fonts or the sounds from the game why is it doing this? They rip the sounds from the game and then uh, they use those instruments that they've ripped with a sound font player in their favorite DAW in Super FL Studio or in, you know, Cakewalk or LMMS or whatever you're using. So where do you get those? All right, let's talk about the best places to get ripped Super Nintendo uh, sound fonts. Now my favorite place to go is over here at William Cage's website. Sorry about all the brightness and getting hit with this bright screen. William Cage makes music, 
but he also rips all these games. You can rip them yourself, but that goes far beyond the scope of this video. It's something I probably should learn how to do myself. But right now I've just been coming over and you can download the sound fonts, songs and stuff like that. But he also makes his own music using those sound fonts. So William, thank you very much for that. Uh, by the way, William, if you're watching, how much do I need to pay you to rip Draken and another game called Equinox? Those two, I've been looking for sound fonts and I haven't broken down and started doing the work to rip them myself, but I really want Draken and I really want Equinox, those two games so badly. I want those sound fonts. Anyway, come over and check out uh, this while you're online. If you like Super Nintendo style music, he does each song. It's a new unique composition in the style of a certain game. So see if you can tell what this is. All right, what, what is this one, huh? So this one is, of course, using Super Metroid, if you couldn't tell, but it's a totally new uh, composition. So William Cage, check him out. Now, let's talk about the legality really quick before we move on. Is this legal to create? Because at the beginning of almost every single game, it says like all of the assets in this game may not be used or reproduced or copied or whatever. You know, all the assets are made for that specific game. So there's a, right now there's no precedent that says that you can't use it because no one has gotten in trouble for it. That doesn't mean that it's legal. That just means that the companies are not pursuing anything. They're not chasing anybody for using this. Also, there's a gray area in the law that says that you should be allowed to use some samples as long as you manipulate them or use them to create a totally new work of art. So there's that argument. The safest bet is if you're going to use uh, sounds and instruments from a game that you give it away for free, allow people to donate or something, but you can say like, this is a hobby thing I'm doing and it's for free. What I've done is I'll show you at the end, I'm actually using uh, mostly samples that are licensed and I'll show you how to do that at the end, but that does cost money. For, for now, we're gonna continue on with the free stuff. So let's show you where you can get even more free sound fonts. Head over to musical-artifacts.com and on, on there, I'll, I'll give you a link to this. It's all gonna be in the description. All these links are gonna be below, so just head on down there and click on them. But right there, you can see if you just search for SNEF formats, you'll get SF2, which are sound fonts, and you can scroll down and look at all these different games. Chrono Trigger and Rockman. Rockman has some really good sounds. Battletoads Double Dragon, you need some chuggy guitars and stuff. Link to the Past has great choral sounds and strings and also some good uh, sound effects. So you could just scroll through here. There's pages and pages of this stuff. You know, just scroll through and you can download as many as you like. And then if you want to go crazy, you can head over to archive.org and download a massive library of sound fonts. Now, this is not just Super Nintendo. This is also sound fonts from PC, like the Roland SC55. Those are PC MIDI sounds, but made into a sound font. But you can play around with all of these, and all of these are going to give you a somewhat authentic sound for old school video games. It'll really pull on those nostalgia strings. Now, next up, you're going to need a way to play these back. You're going to need some program that will allow you to load these into your DAW. Now, for that, I've gone all the way around. I know William Cage, if you go to his website, he recommends uh, using Sforzando. I'll bring that one up as well. I've used Sforzando extensively, and this is the one I started with, SFS2. And I keep coming back to this. I've tried like five different programs, and while there are some features here, I find this one to be easier to use, so I recommend this for beginners, and also for someone like me who's used everything, and then finally, I keep coming back to this one. I, I love SFS2. So let's show you how it works. Once you get into your DAW, you just put this, it's a VST. You just unzip it, put it into your VST folder, then scan for it, and there it'll be. And then you can right click here and insert, and SFS2. Um, just to make sure, if you haven't scanned for it, you may have to go to More Plugins, Manage Plugins, and then click on Find More Plugins, or you may have to, depending on whatever program you're using, Cakewalk or LMMS, you may have to scan your VST folder, but once you do, it'll find it, and then you can just load up SFS2. There we go. And then right here, there's a button that says load. We're going to load, I've got some here. Let's load up, um, all right, you wanna hear some Super Castlevania stuff? Let's do Dracula X instead, why not? So you load it up, and then here are all your instruments, this little drop down here. Sorry, this is very small. This one uh, is a bad, poorly made sound font. They've got doubled up and tripled up stuff. Let's see what the flute sounds like. Oh, 
sounds okay. So you can do that. There's also something here called bank. They may have multiple banks. Most of the time bank zero is going to be all of the instruments and bank 128 will be uh, drums and stuff. So if you click on this, it won't initialize instantly. I usually have to click on this and then maybe play a couple notes. Then all of a sudden it'll be like, okay, there it is. Drums. All right, so when you get your drums out, there's gonna be a whole bunch of different, you gotta find them. Where are they? There they are. All right, so there's that. And that's how you get to the drums and different things. Go back to bank zero, pick an instrument. I'll just do a little ditty really quick. slower. All right, we'll just uh, have this be the whole thing. I'll double this up and make it twice. Oh, yeah, we're in 5-4 time. I, I was making a song in 5-4. Anyway, there's that sound, right? We've got... You can hear how compressed it is and everything, right? You can hear it's just very compressed. But it, you know, it doesn't really sound like SNES just yet. The SNES usually had some reverb and it had a very signature uh, sounding reverb. SNES delay effect is what you need. So it's not really, I guess it's more of a delay, but built into the SNES, there was this sort of repeating delay that almost sounded like a plate or something like that. And SNES delay is a free way to get that sound. So let's see what we can do. You can just download this. It's another VST. Put it into your VST folder, just like the other thing. And there are other ways to do this. You can follow this tutorial here if you want to use the Fruity Delay in FL Studio to create the SNES style, um, uh, basically the delay or slight reverb effect. You can do it that way. So I just got this for free, but you can do it any one of those three ways. Here's how I'm going to do it. Grab this for free. Come back over here. Now let's just uh, set this to channel 12 to make sure there's nothing else there. Channel 12, SNES delay. Yes. All right, now let's hear, hear before and after. This is before. Ready? And here's after. Let's slow that way down, that's too fast. All right, before. See how it's very flat? But now we're gonna give it the SNES delay right now. Okay, if you wanna cheat a little bit, it's okay to add some reverb because a lot of the people who uh, made sound files and stuff for um, the SNES, they would build reverb into the samples themselves. So I like to, I cheat a lot. This is way too much. I use Valhalla Vintage Verb. This is too much reverb, but I like it to have a slightly softer sound. If you want to go crazy, you can. I don't know why I've got this stupid piano line going. Anyway, so that'll get you started. Now, I'm going to give you a couple of tips while we're here, because I, I when I first started making music, everything I made was basically center aligned, I didn't mess around with, uh, I just let everything be muddy. So what will happen is if you make all your music and you keep it center aligned and you do not equalize each, each instrument, they're going to sound muddy because their frequencies are going to overlap. Now, if you want to have a lot of instruments playing at the same time, you can do that. You'll just need to pan one to the left, pan the other to the right if they're occupying the same frequency space. And then, you know, you'll have to duck some frequencies down to let the leads you know, go above that and stuff like that. That's probably a different video, but just for now, just know that you can come over and, and pan things to the left and right, and then it's always good to equalize things a little bit. Like I said, didn't do that in the beginning, but now I kind of do. And that's why this, as you can hear, I'll play something that has a lot of stuff going on at the same time.
you can hear there there's stuff going on a lot of stuff going on at the same time but i've kind of separated it i'm not as i'm not a pro at that stuff but that'll that'll go a long way and if you listen to especially stuff like listen to act razor listen to the soundtrack to act razor uh, when you do you'll notice i can't even play that one because i played that one once and got a copyright violation for playing this old game so i'm not going to play act razor on on stream but listen to it you'll notice you'll hear almost sounds that shouldn't be there but like they'll be just in your left ear and almost like if that sound were played by itself it would be annoying but played with the entire symphony it's kind of blending together and sounding full so it's weird but you'll hear a lot of that stuff you, if you try to pick out individual instruments and, and like follow them and then be like wow that i didn't ever even notice but like during this big symphonic part there's one like kind of buzzy instrument in the background going and it's annoying almost but played with all the other instruments it's like oh that's kind of adding a little layer and kind of moving stuff forward it's weird but listen to those to get ideas all right let's say you want to um get something that you know is going to be legal and that you're not going to have to worry about and you're willing to spend money because this is what you want to do you want to make a soundtrack for a video game that you're going to sell you want to make a soundtrack for somebody else's video game or maybe you just want to make something you're going to sell yourself on Bandcamp and it's like your art and you're going to sell it that's good well where can we get samples impact soundworks has made this awesome program called super audio cart this went on sale last year for like half price during black friday watch for sales on this so what this does is it gives you um all the sounds you're going to need for super nintendo but it also gives you well let's just open it up i've showed you this uh, it comes with SNES Verb, which is a, uh, I wouldn't say better, but just like a more full-featured version of that uh, Super Nintendo Reverb program. So you're going to need a basic version of Contact to get this up and running. Where's my Contact? Library, Super Audio Cart. That's all I really use it for. Click on Instruments here, and you'll see we have one layer or multiple layers. If you're only going to be using one instrument, just use one layer, and I'll show you what that means. But I'm going to open up a Super Audio Cart here. And you have multiple layers, so we can have like, you know, a Nintendo sound on the top and a Game Boy sound on the bottom, and they'll all be together. Like, or just one layer. If you're only going to use one layer, you could just do the one layer thing. But check this out. If you click on the console here, you have all these consoles to choose, choose from. Genesis, and C64, all kinds of stuff. Uh, let me just go ahead and click on Super Nintendo here. And these are licensed sounds that are may sound like they're from a lot of different games out there, but you'll be able to hear these have a very Super Nintendo sound. There's a choir. Different choirs. Uh, different drum kits and stuff. So this one, again, is a paid program. Let's go ahead and mess around with something. See if we can find something that sounds similar. Maybe a piano up here. Bass at the top, and then keys are what we're looking for. All right, FM pianos. Harpsichord. Very high, let's just bring that down here. Turn it down just a little bit so we can talk, you know. All right, that sounds really just kind of boring out of the box. But if you click on FX down here on the bottom, you can come in and do a bit crusher to give it a little bit more of a compressed sound. Turn the bit depth down. Turn the sample, that's nothing now. Turn the sample rate down. You can play around with this until you're heart's content. There's that, there's all kinds of stuff here you can play with. There's SNES Verb, which is like very similar to what I just mentioned earlier. I still like the simplicity of the other Super Nintendo Reverb, so, so I, sometimes I keep to that. So there's that. We can go back to the main. Now, there's also um, four different channels here because you have A, B, C, and D. So down here, this is A, and this will allow you to, well, you can create, pit, change your pitches and volumes and all kinds of stuff. You can mess with the sound effect itself here. But over here, we have our envelope. And as you'll notice when you first start this, the velocity sensitivity is completely turned off. I like to turn that up. 
Now what that means is when you're opening up your piano roll here, you'll see we have note velocity down here on the bottom. And that's all the same, but we can have dynamic note velocities, you know, like, and that's going to change how basically how hard you're pressing that note as if you were playing a piano. And now listen with the note velocity turned up. Get all the way up right here. Yeah. This is, you, you would never do something like this. You know, you would probably just, you know, keep it similar. But if you wanted to have it, have it crescendo in and you, you wanted to do that with note velocity instead of volume, you could do that. So that, that's something that's uh, fun to play with. Also over here, if you want to sort of create something moody or something, you can, uh, let's just bring this over to a choral sound. Back here to see, find my choir. That's cool. All right. So let's uh, add a couple choir notes, maybe some low notes. Here we go. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change the attack to have this sound a little more spacey and that sort of thing. So let me go back over here to this. Once I'm done, I always change the color and name these. And then I'm gonna click on A, and I'm just gonna bring my attack back a little bit, and also my release so it, you know, it let, let's go a little softer. Now let's see what it sounds like. So there we go. And then if you wanted to, you could also, let's put it on channel 12 again. Now we can give it that reverb and the delay and all that kind of stuff. Turn this up and see what we got now. The, the, the reverb's too much. And we're on our way to doing something there with this. You can come over and play with more of this stuff. You've got vibrato, portamento, which will let you bend the notes. Let's check out this portamento and just show you what that can do. It sounds starting to sound like a Zelda cutscene there if I'm not careful. All right, let's bring the attack back down and the portamento time. There we go, pitch bend range, there we go. Bring up that portamento. Hear that, that bend? That's what the portamento will do. And there's times when you'll find you'll need that, but I've, most of the time I don't use it, but you know. You can almost see like a crystal floating down in Link and then some voices going, hey. You know, that's how it works always with this weird music. <laughs> There, now we've got uh, a cutscene for um, some game. <laughs> uh, it's fun. Okay, whatever. I'm not going to save any of this, but I mean, I, maybe I will. I don't know. I doubt you'll hear any of this on the next album. So when you get Super Audio Card, you also get Super Audio Card for the PC. You get a Game Boy a, a instrument as well that I haven't been using much because uh, I haven't been focusing on that, but let me show you what Super Audio Cart PC. Click on that. This also comes with it. Super Audio Cart PC will let you pick between the Amiga, there's Tracker, C64, AdLib, Aegeus, MSX, uh, WinGR, and Pokey. So let's, I, I usually just stick to AdLib. Uh, Amiga sounds are really good. So sometimes they're almost too good, you know? And then right down here, there are some interesting uh, sounds that have been pre pre-made. They're not authentic, but just for instance, let me get some keys here. Go down to synth alien chimes. And this will load up three. This is loaded loaded up four layers right here. So as you can see, it's loaded up all four of these layers. And then we'll have to go back and change on all four of these layers our settings. But you know, like you can come and play around with these and, and get some pretty interesting stuff. Let's get some a oh, nice soft pad. Yes. How about under the sea? What's that going to sound like? Kind of weird, interesting. But you can play around with this at your heart's content. And again, this one does cost money, but it is the safest way. For most of the song, I've been using Super Audio Cart PC because I wanted sort of a PC RPG flavor. But I have a few SNES. Uh, sounds tucked in for good measure. 
there we go super audio cart string section is super nintendo so this one's a combination of super audio cart pc and um super nintendo and i think it's gonna be here <laughs> got a mix of all kinds of instruments in there. Here's my, uh... Oh, there's a playlist. Not organized, but, you know, there it is. A lot of Super Nintendo in here. You can hear those Super Nintendo strings right there. And then some Super Nintendo drums right here snare. Actually, that's a PC snare. Anyway, kind of a fun song, I think. Hopefully everybody likes it. Thanks to everybody over the years for supporting the music and checking it out. I really hope you enjoy it. Uh, this stuff's been number one on Bandcamp twice now. Let's see if we can get this one up toward the top coming out Halloween. So go ahead down to the description. Uh, you'll see a link to this where you can pre-order the album now or just watch the page. It's Vihander.com. Pretty easy to remember, but it'll take you over here. Thanks for watching, everybody. Hopefully this will get you started down the road of Super Nintendo and also understanding how some of the Super Nintendo stuff works. If you want recommendations on albums to listen to for ideas uh, or just like arrangement ideas, hit me up in the comments because I really listen to a lot of this music on my own time while I'm doing my own stuff because I'm that kind of a weirdo. And if you come into my streams and stuff, you'll notice I listen to a lot of this music. So, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Thanks again to our sponsor. Thanks again to everybody watching, and uh, thanks to, I don't know, mom or somebody. It's kind of trailing off. Bye.